Okay, so let's talk about incorporating templates into your Pro Tools workflow. So before we get started, I actually have a video where I'm talking all about templates and how I feel about templates, and it's kind of complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a card up on the screen for that. Basically, I think you should know, everyone should know that templates aren't going to magically make your stuff sound a certain way. Um, they can be a great starting point. But if someone's selling you a template and trying to take your money in exchange for a template, saying that it's going to be some kind of a magic pill to solve your mix problems, then I would not trust them personally. So check out that video um, if you're not super familiar with the whole template world and, um, you know, people trying to make a profit off of templates. Please check out that video. But with that said, templates can be very good sometimes, and they're a great starting point. They're a great way to see how other engineers and other producers work and how their brains work, right, and how their process works. So sometimes it's great to have templates. It's great to get templates from other people, and sometimes it's great to save out your own templates to use, right? So with that said, what we're going to talk about today is how to take a template, for example, one that you might have gotten from someone else and downloaded and then incorporate that into your workflow. And I'm making this video because of a conversation on my Patreon Discord. So this came up in a conversation, there were questions about it, and I wanted to make a video to sh show how it works, right? Instead of just talking about it. And you know, part of me thinks it is a lot easier to just show it, so there's that. But but with that said, if you do want to come participate in the conversation on our Discord server, it is available to my Patreon patrons. So it's patreon.com slash noise, and it does help support my channel. I don't do a lot of marketing or paid videos, um, so it's, it's really critical to keeping this channel running. So please feel free to check that out. So let's say you've downloaded a template and you're like, how do I get this into my system here? That's kind of what we're talking about today. So the way that I would actually figure it out is I would open any session. So this is just a random session that I have open and I'm going to go save as template. And what you can do is you can install the template in your system and you can choose a category, which is basically a folder in your system somewhere for templates. So I have my own templates. Um, there are different categories that Pro Tools will create. You can create a whole new category if you want. But basically, that's just creating a folder in your system somewhere. So what you can do is go reveal session templates folder. And now you can see where those are. So for example, if you have already downloaded a template from somebody else, what you can do is you can copy and paste that template into one of these folders. You just click the folder and here it's just behaving like a normal folder. So you just gotta find that PTXT file and paste it into this folder or drag it into this folder. That's all you have to do. And then it'll appear here in Pro Tools. You might have to restart Pro Tools first but it'll appear here within your Pro Tools templates when you go to try to create a new session with a template. So I can do that really quick just to show you. So you go File, Save as Template. Let's say I want to put this one in post-production. I'm just going to leave it with that name so I know and I can find it later and um, get rid of it. But um, you can also select the location for your template and you can choose whether or not to include media. So if I am creating a template, usually I do not include media because usually what I want to save are things like the different tracks, what tracks are there, the different aux tracks, the plugins that are included, stuff like that. But then usually I don't want to save the actual audio. Um, if I do want to save audio in there, like for example, let's say I have a, a kick sample that I like to use in a bunch of different um, tracks or that I'd like to use across an album, um, you could include media and then delete stuff from the template and resave it and have just the kick drum or just whatever you want to keep in there. That's one way you can do it. Or um, you could just not include media and then import that kick drum separately and then save the template. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can do it. And if you want to be really safe or really specific about what media you're using, one easy way to do that is to make a whole duplicate copy of your session folder before you save the session template at all. And then you can just delete whatever you don't want, you know, pare it down to what you actually want in the template. Because a lot of times what's in the actual song session, for example, is going to be way more detailed than what you want in the actual template. So um, sometimes I will actually just straight up copy the whole session folder and then paste it on my desktop, for example, and then open that version pare it down a ton 
and then do a save as template um, just like here. So it's up to you. Depends on what you're trying to do, right? But that's how I tend to do things. And then you just hit OK. And so now if I go to look in this folder, there it is. Clance and Imes potatoes. So now I have this template. If I wanted to send this to someone, I could just send them this PTXT file and they'll have my template. Since I didn't include media, that's all I need to send to them. So it's pretty easy to create a template. It's pretty easy to just copy and paste a template into one of your folders for your templates, right? You, the trick is just finding the path for where it goes. So, you know, in mine here, it's in documents, pro tools, session templates, post, you know, and then whatever folder, I almost said post-production, but whatever, you know, subject folder you want to put it in. And, you know, I don't remember the exact path on Windows, but you should be able to figure it out pretty easily. Um, just search that file path for, for a Windows machine or, you know, run a search for the session templates folder on your computer and you should be able to find it. But, you know, if anyone has trouble, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. Um, sometimes I can figure it out. Uh, I do have access to some Windows machines with Pro Tools on them. So um, just let me know if you have any trouble. And then let me actually close this session. I'm not going to save because I haven't made any changes to it. And then when you're working with a template like this, when you want to actually incorporate it into your workflow, what you can do is either when Pro Tools opens, you'll get that new session dialog, or you can go to create new. And then you just want to choose create from template here. So you just check that off, and then you can choose the template that you want. Um, you can rename it, you know, whatever you want to name it, choose its location. I'm just going to put it on the desktop because I'm going to get rid of it after this. You can change some of the details here, like your bit depth and sample rate, right? That has to do with um, how accurately the frequencies are reproduced is the sample rate. And then bit depth has to do with your dynamic range. I have a video about all that. So maybe I'll link to that as well in the cards. But then you just hit create and what it's going to do is it's going to open up a session with all those, you know, whatever you saved your template out with. So all the tracks that I just had in that session are going to open up and they're going to be there and they're going to have my plugins and stuff. And it's going to take forever because it was a kind of big session. But here it is, all my tracks. I have my automation and everything, but you'll notice there's no, there are no audio files here. So that's the media that I did not include by checking off, by not checking off that box. So now I'm good to go. I could start recording vocals, start you know adding a bass here with my serum track, stuff like that. Um, and I have the same structure laid out here, you know. So it just depends on what you want to save is what ends up in your template. But um, if you're getting a template from someone else, it's super easy to just open it up. You just got to paste it into that folder. And I've been going kind of back and forth on whether or not to, you know, if I make a copy of a session and I clear stuff out, whether to clear the automation. Because sometimes I do like making similar automation moves. A lot of times I'll, I usually clear most of it, right? But for example, if I have, let's see, this one has it. Yeah, I have like these drum tracks that I like to add effects with. And a lot of times towards the end of the bridge, I like to have some kind of like increase. So a lot of times I will leave like this part of the automation here, for example, and then I, I modify it, right? And I change it and I might remove one of these tracks or add a different track or, or what have you. I don't just leave it that way. But um, a lot of the time I will modify it. Um, so I'll leave it there so that I can have it as a starting point. But again, it's up to you. So I think that's about everything that I had to say here about templates. I hope I answered any questions that might pop up. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I would appreciate all of that stuff. Check out my Patreon if you can. If you feel so inclined, it's patreon.com slash noise. Uh, that's where my idea for this video came up was a conversation on our discord server so you know check that out if you feel so inclined and other than that i come out with new videos every wednesday and thank you so much for hanging out okay Let's start doing this.